Well, hello and welcome, everybody. This is Kendi Bonsky, your host in the Voices of Current show. Today, I have a question for you. Are you on a path to financial disaster or are you on a path to financial abundance? Or maybe somewhere in between. Well, guess what? Today, we're talking about finance, 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 your money, your challenges with money, and things that are limiting you from really having abundance in your life. Now, of course, you know, the media is talking about the big recession and the big resets and the big this and that. Is that impacting you? Or are you just noticing it and uh, setting your intention to create wealth beyond measure anyway? Well, I hope you're thinking the latter because I'll tell you what, you know, life happens, right? You know, economies go, economies go, you know, people come, people go, relationships come, relationships go, careers come, careers go, and recessions come and recessions go. And it doesn't mean that you have to be attached to them. It just means that they're there for you to really to thrive. And this is your time. This is your time to step up to create more wealth and more abundance in your life than maybe you've ever had in your life, most likely. Well, that's what we do on the show, okay? We blow out all the mindsets. We, you know, this is, I guess I would call the show like a breakthrough show for you today. If you are open and willing to listen to the message, which stops most of us, right? 80% of the people are not open to change and new messages. At least that's the old statistic. Might be different after the COVID reset. But here's the deal. If you're part of that group that is not, allowing yourself to hear these messages, it's because you have resistance. And what is resistance? It's your beliefs. It's your subconscious that buried uh, uh, traumas and traumas, challenges of the past. It's your distractions that you get distracted, you can't be present, right? All of that creates resistance to opening your mind and your heart to the messages. So I'm hoping you'll open up because I have a very special guest today who's going to help you to open up the possibilities, and give you some specific strategies to create more wealth in your life. I'm going to take a break. As soon as I get back, I'll introduce you to my guest. Well, Martha Adams, welcome to the show. It's so good to have you. I've been expecting great things with this show, and I'm, I'm, really, I'm really pleased you're here. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here. You know, we were talking before the uh, before the show, and uh, you know, I was looking at your book cover. I, I really want to show that to everybody, like right now, because I think it's one of the most amazing book covers that I have probably ever seen on this show. It just represents what we're talking about today. So I'm going to put it on the screen. And uh, for those of you that uh, are uh, able to see uh, through our TV uh, stations, then you get to see this. And those of you that are just uh, audio right now, I'll just describe it. It's the uh, name of the book, which is uh, Cleopatra's Riches. And it's a picture of Martha, but she looks like Cleopatra. And uh, it's uh, it's just a beautiful cover. I mean, it really does represent a richness and abundance. And why? My, let's just start there. Why this book cover? So the, it's exactly what you said, Ken. It is a different book covers, particularly for a financial conversation. And the cover is different because the contents are different. You know, we start the financial conversation in so many ways with the, the facts, the figures, the external. But here we're starting in a different manner. We're starting with the internal, those riches and richness of our story and connecting with that to then create the abundance and wealth in our lives that we want to see. Because the way we feel is connected to what we believe and ultimately the results that we see around us. So when we start in a different place and ask different questions, we can have different results. All goes back to the cover. I thought, well, you know what, here, I have to tell you this. I've done hundreds of these shows, right? <laughs> and yeah. never, ever started it this way. I've never put the cover up first. So we are starting a different way. And isn't that what we kind of need to do to break past some of the limiting beliefs? 
you know, that, that hold us back financially. Absolutely. I mean, we, especially in the financial conversation, often, you know, find ourselves asking the same questions, going through the same strategies and ideas, right? So, uh, and then ending up in the same place or perhaps even further back than, than where we started. That's all representative of the way that we feel, which in so many ways is the missing piece. So to have those different results, we've got to start asking different questions. And that's exactly what I do in Cleopatra's Riches, to start with our feelings, our beliefs, and then we can change those results. So understand the feeling, connect with the belief, and change those results. Well, I love that. I love that a lot. So um, it's it really is uh, cutting edge today in uh, in so many ways. In the fact that if you have a uh, let's say you have an upset around money, okay. Oh my gosh, uh, the bank account. I just looked at uh, the bank at the bank account, and there's something in I was that expected me to now my money's you know low or, or I have no money. What? Oh, you know how that feels in the body. Yeah. How do you help people to overcome those feelings of lack, limitation, so that they can tune back into the abundance? So let's start by understanding what happens right now. Because can you are starting to bring an awareness to that, and I think that's that's the most powerful thing. Let's bring an awareness to that. Because when we look at that bank account, what the financial conversation today does is allow it to define us. Right? So what's an example of that? Things that we say to ourselves, I'm a spender. I'm always going to be in debt. I'm broke. We say these absolute statements about ourselves that define us. So we're letting in so many ways the outside in. We're controlled by the outside. We allow that in. And in allowing that in, we create more of that. Right. And so it filters a lot of judgment and, and ridicule. So when we say what happens within our body, one word for that suppression. Now, what's being suppressed? The missing piece of the financial conversation, our emotions, the way that we feel. So, what I love to do is to start with that missing piece to start with the way that we feel and focus on expression. Because money is uh, one of the greatest forms of self-expression. And that starts in the way that we feel. So when we understand what was, and I really do mean what was, focusing then understanding the past, we can connect with what is, but now we're not in a position that it defines us anymore. Now we look to the past and command it in a way that refines us. Then we can create the abundance and wealth that we want. Well, I I love this conversation. And I want us to say this. I do have to take a break in a second. <clears throat> what I'm also tuning into is that... Thought is universal. Thought is not individual. Although we think it, we have individual thoughts. But when we learn it's universal, and we start asking those old questions like "Why me? Why do I have no money? Why is this uh, you know, bank account low again?" And, you know, it, it, what happens is it tunes us into that database that's out there. Okay, that you know it's like you're turning your radio station, you're turning into that database, and all of a sudden now you're getting those downloads. And what I'm hearing you say is you suggest you say, wait a second, get present. Get present here and now. That was the past. That doesn't have to be your future. Your future will be compelling and amazing if you start to learn how to tune into those emotions, is what I'm hearing, because the emotions are really the result of your thinking. It's money over emotion. So if you're feeling a certain way, you know, and let's say you're feeling disempowered or you know, or if you feeling great, either way, okay, you've probably had some thoughts around what's going on that's generating those emotions, my guess. Now, of course, emotions do get stuck in the body, right? 
<laughs> and we can we can talk about that too. Um, but listen, I got to take a break. When we come back, um, I want to I want to take a, a step back. I want to find out why you started to tune into your feelings and emotions and how that happened and how this book came up being. Okay, so let's do that, and we'll take a uh, a quick break, and we'll go from there. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. Well, welcome back to Day, and this show is called, I'm calling the show, by the way, Curse to Redefine Your Financial Journey. If you just joined us, our guest today uh, is bringing sort of compassion, empathy, and authority to a conversation where we, I, I know it's really needed in today's society, right? We're talking about money, your money. Martha Adams has a passion to change the financial industry for the better as she brings the true starting place of financial literacy, which is how we feel about money. All right. Martha, um, feelings, how, what happened for you? What's your story? How did you tune into this, you know, money stuff? And then, you know, what, how did that tune into the book? What, let's start there. In many ways, it started in my childhood because I was blessed with a childhood where I really stood out. I didn't fit in. I didn't fit into the community I grew up in. Where, you know, it was, I was in a household of a very loving immigrant family who, you know, uh, worked really hard to buy a starter home in a wealthy neighborhood. So I grew up in a wealthy neighborhood, not in a materially wealthy household. So that meant I certainly did not fit in to the community where I grew up. I didn't fit into my household either because I was, well, culturally viewed as very opinionated. And so, you know, perhaps that really wasn't viewed as quote unquote appropriate for, for a young girl, but that didn't matter to me. Now, uh, I could have very easily let the outside control me, but instead I allowed it to refine me. I look to say, hey, my emotions can work against me here, or I can have them work for me to say, hey, I've been blessed with the opportunity to have to to be in a position where I'm standing out. And then that had me be comfortable with that. So in my early 20s, I stood out in the industry I chose to be a part of, uh, which was the the financial industry. So from money being something that could have very well worked against me, I connected with it in a manner that, uh, well, my my emotions and my human experience worked for me. And that's exactly what I wanted to help others do and uh, create the abundance that they wanted in their life through those, through them defining those experiences. So that's why then I started as a, a woman in my 20s, uh, who looked, spoke, acted differently than than my industry as an independent. So independent, meaning that I did not have the backing of any particular company or group of companies, but I had the most powerful backing, which was my belief, my belief in a different conversation, starting in a different place, which is that human experience, the way we feel. But you keep pointing to within, within, within. It's inside. It's inside. It's inside. And yeah, you know, it's uh, it's inside. I, you know, we go within and go without. Right? Literally, don't go within. Eventually, you'll go without. So we're talking about money. Um, so let's just talk about what what strategies do you have to help people to identify their feelings and emotions, and then be able to transmute those into feelings and emotions that would really empower them. Uh, let's talk about that. And, and I suppose a lot of this is a book too. It is. Yeah, absolutely. 
So the first thing is normalizing the conversation around emotions and money, right? Because the financial conversation is based so much on suppression, our emotions are either depreciated or written off entirely, right? So in in some way, shape, or form, then they're discluded. But exactly what we're doing in our conversation today, Ken, is starting to normalize the emotions and money conversation. Then what I help them do is to systemize it. Now that I brought an awareness, how do I then change the actions in my life? So that's where I help people connect to where their thoughts on money came from, which is what I call the pyramid of financial influences. So Mm -hmm. messaging that we heard in the first layer, which is our upbringing, but that messaging didn't just show up either, right? It was passed down from generations past. So it's part of our origin story. So origins and upbringing is our first layer. Then as we grew up, well, we I started to share about the community I grew up in. We all grew up in communities, school communities, religious communities, where we started to internalize messaging around money. And then we had societal messaging. I mean, you started our conversation today in your beautiful intro talking about messaging that we internalize from the media, for example, right? We hear things about the class system. All of these are societal messaging that we internalize and haven't had a chance to bring an awareness to. And now we bring all of that into our final layer of influences, which is our committed romantic relationships. All of that, wrapped around all of that, are our emotional associations. Now, once we bring an awareness to those emotional associations, then I walk you through the 4R process. Now, all of this is in the book step-by-step. The 4R process is where we first recognize those emotional associations at their source. Now we can move on to the second R, which is to reconcile them. Where did they come from? How are you seeing those emotional associations in your life today? So as you build perspective, you start to bring in the most powerful tool, empathy, empathy for yourself and for the characters in your story. From there, you can now bring in your power of choice. Are you going to choose to be limited by those? Or are you going to have the courage to choose the courage to break free? You do have a powerful voice and you can break free. And so that's when now you can make space for what you want by releasing what doesn't serve you and repeating the messaging that you do want. Recognize, reconcile, release, and repeat. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I love that. And let's talk about courage real quick around that process because, you know, a lot of people think courage is something and either other people have or they know they have a little courage, but they're, they, they don't feel courageous in a lot of areas, especially when I'm money. So I'm going to just say this because I wrote the book on courage. It's called The Courage to Change Everything, the Least Strategies and Essential Wisdom Tool Making Your Inner Genius. And I'm just going to throw that on the screen real quick so some of you can see that, right? You know, uh, there's a little quote up there that says, staring failure in the face and not shrinking back takes courage. But this is exactly what is needed to realize a bright future, right? So courage, courage is a force. It's the power. It's an energy. It's a feeling inside of us that when we tap into it, we become unstoppable, right? Okay. So once somebody feels that courage and they become unstoppable, what is possible? Let's let's say somebody's been in a you know earning I don't know you know eighty thousand dollars a year for the last ten years and and you know they get along they're they're barely getting along and say the equity you'd be almost at the poverty level here at that level, um you know but they want to they want to shift they really need something. They got to get out of debt. They want to take their income level to the next level and they want to feel empowered. How does somebody do that? To create something different, 
we must see something different. So we must then see ourselves differently. To see ourselves differently, we've got to actually see ourselves in the financial conversation in the first place. In so many ways, that's missing. Because if I only define myself based on the external, based on what my current statement is or or credit score is, and I define myself as that, I am that as an absolute, then how am I going to create a future? I have nothing to put into that GPS, right? To create that route. I can't see it. So the first thing is to make ourselves, not the numbers, but ourselves central to the conversation. Why am I here? Not how, why? When I start to ask why, I start to ask questions about myself versus the number. So I'm giving myself priority. And when I'm giving myself priority, I'm giving my story priority, right? So I can see messaging that was passed down from generations past, right? Not just from my upbringing, but from generations past too. So here's an example. I was just at an event speaking. And after I was done, one of the attendees came up to me and shared with me messaging that she had from, that was, you know, from her parents, but also from generations past of her W-2. You, you must have that W-2. Well, if I want to increase from 80,000, let's just say I want to now move to being an entrepreneur, but I feel that ball and chain to that W-2, that W-2 has control, right? Now, the messaging is well-meaning. This is where empathy comes in. That messaging was well-meaning, but I don't have to be controlled by it. I don't have to be limited by it anymore. That came from perspective. And then we can talk about security being something that's from the inside out and then flip on that courage switch. I get that. And you know, I also get, because I grew up in a, a household where, um, I guess, thinking about it, I was the first entrepreneur in that, uh, in my house. Mm-hmm. My parents both moved to the state and they had that mindset. They had uh, that security uh, mindset. We'll talk about that when we get back. And then we're going to, uh, then you get deeper dive into uh, releasing emotions and uh, a few other little pieces. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Oh, welcome back, everybody. This is Ken D. Foster. I'm talking with Martha Adams. We're having a blast. We're having a really great conversation around money. Martha's taking us on a pretty deep journey here. So um, uh, I want to take that journey a little deeper. Uh, let, but let's start out with the security piece because that so many people, that's like their number one uh, value is security, right? So, man, to be an entrepreneur, you kind of have to let go of that piece for a little while. <laughs> and I wouldn't even have to, I wouldn't say we have to let go of it. I feel that we've got to redefine it. Because if I give that, so this was the conversation I was having with this, with this attendee. And, uh, and it was certainly something I could relate to, right? Because it was, you know, like you can, it was a part of my story as well. You know, one of the things I, I talk about in the book was, you know, the way my parents were so well-meaning and what they defined as, as success, right? And security. And that was one of the fab five careers. So a fab five career is where a, a, an Egyptian immigrant parent, certainly when I was growing up, feel that, you know, if your child goes down the path of one of these careers, you've made it. Here are the fab five. One is, of course, a doctor. You want your child to be a doctor. There's a lot of security there. That's wonderful. Uh, a, uh, a pharmacist, a dentist, an engineer, or the fifth is the consolation prize, uh, which is a government employee with a solid pension, right? 
And and so, right, yes, <laughs> you know what that is. Both of our parents felt that for sure. And uh, that is, you know, I think many of us can relate to those Fab Five in some way, shape, or form because they, in a lot of ways, define security. But how is that defining security? Money is a form of self-expression. I had the marks. If I wanted to be a doctor, I could have done it. Would I have enjoyed it? I would have been making money. I wouldn't have been earning it because it didn't have the meaning in it for me, right? It didn't have that emotional connection. So when I chose my career, security for me came from the inside out. Because I started on the foundation of belief, of course, along in my case with the educational background and experience to go with it, I was all built from that initial seed of belief, right? So security then for me came from the inside out. How did we see it? Well, we saw it in the fact that in my case, I was starting a practice against the odds and against the tide. I was a woman in my 20s in an industry where as an independent, you were uh, in a population of, it's certainly a male-dominated population with an average age of 60 and older in my case. And I'm walking in as an early 20s female. Right. And so this is the power of belief. I wasn't focused on that external. In fact, I looked at that external as an asset versus a liability. Right. So that's the power of courage and belief that then creates that security from the inside out. You know, I, uh, Bob Proctor, I was blessed to say, was a friend and a mentor. And one of the things he would always say, and God rest his soul, one of the things he would always say is security is an inside job. And I always, it always resonated with me because, you know, money in a lot of ways is a lived experience. Yes. And I could connect that to my own lived experience to say, that's right. It really, it is an inside job. Well, I think for it to be an inside job, I, I like what you're talking about. It's about redefining. And I think uh, at some level, we you know, to, to really start to experience abundance in life, we have to redefine several things. Um, I believe we need to redefine ourselves. We need to redefine what, uh, what is possible. We need to redefine uh, what we want. And we probably need to redefine our purpose in life. So it's... And by the way, if you're listening to this today, you might be taking notes. I hope you're taking notes on what Martha is saying because she's giving us real tips on how to change your psyche and redefine yourself so that you can start to create the abundance that you want in your life. What do you say to what I just said? I'm sorry. It, it cut out there momentarily. Can you say the last question? Yes. What, uh, okay. So what, uh, what would you say to what I just said about redefining who we are, what we want, uh, what's possible, and uh, you know what, uh, uh, yeah, what our purpose is. One of the things that I connect with right away on that, because you you bring up such a beautiful point to redefine what our purpose is. You're right; we've got to connect with it first. Now, one of the first things that we do is start by asking how. How do I redefine my purpose? Well, we started our conversation by saying to have different results, we've got to ask different questions. So let's ask a different question. Let's start to ask the why questions. Why do I want to earn money? Yes. Right? What do I want to contribute to this world? Why do I see myself 
the way I do? Or why do I not see myself? Now we can start to focus on what we want. You know, often with with purpose, we can get lost in someone else's vision. That's often what happens with making money, right? Well, look at the how questions. How do we make money? We get lost in someone else's vision, right? We get inundated with all sorts of ideas. But when we're focused on our why, we start to focus on our own meaning, right? which is now how we earn money, right? So looking at what we want to contribute, looking at ourselves, our own gifts, and putting that as central, then what happens? Now we begin to do something else that Bob Proctor would always talk about. Bringing up his name makes me think of all of the wonderful messaging that he shared with all of us. And one thing that, he would always share is to uh, focus on serving people and using money, right? And to me, that's at the center of earning money is to serve people. So what do I want to contribute? Start to ask different questions. We'll see different results. Well, listen, I'm going to take a break, and I've uh, got uh, Martha's uh, book up on our screen, and Cleopatra's Riches. Great book. Cleopatra's Riches. Um, Martha, when we come back from the break, I want to ask you, and this is on behalf of my audience, if my audience reading this book, what are the three, like you would say, the most important takeaways that they're going to get as they read this book? Okay. So we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. Welcome back, everybody. This is such a wonderful show. I'm so enjoying our time together, Martha. So with the new book, Cleopatra's Riches, what uh, what what would you say my audience is going to take away? Most important for them? And, and of course, that's, that's a hard question maybe to answer because everybody has different things they'll take away. But what would you say uh, they'll, they'll, some of the big takeaways of that book? The first is hearing their own voice. That might sound simple, but it's often not easy in the financial conversation because we're inundated with everyone else's voice, right? And so in a lot of ways, we have earplugs in that we can't even hear our own voice. Here we're starting with the individual. So hearing their own voice because they are the priority here. Now in that, We're then going to understand the second thing, which is why the ideas of making money, spending it, and maybe saving it aren't ideas that work. And then the third thing, right? Once we work through that, the third thing is to connect with the idea and exactly then how to do this of working through the most central thing to the financial conversation, which is the fact that it is experienced emotionally rather than solely understood intellectually. And so prioritizing that human experience and working through it so that you can then earn, grow, and enjoy the kind of money in the way that you want. That's what Cleopatra's Riches helps to do. Mm, that's beautiful. And uh, for our listening audience, where can the people get the Cleopatra's uh, Riches? It's available worldwide. So wherever you are in the world, you will be able to find Cleopatra's Riches. So it's certainly available on Amazon Worldwide, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, 
it is it is available uh, online and in retail stores internationally. I love that. You know, some people have some deep limitations and uh, deep seated beliefs that uh, have been uh, instilled in them through society, through parents, family, through friends, peers. Uh, you know, some books they've read. It, it's just. There's some illusion, delusion that's just been implanted in their in their minds. So when I say delusion, delusion, I'm talking about those beliefs that really limit a person's potential, limit them in thinking of ways that uh, you know, thinking of themselves as anything less than an eternal spirit, you know, powerful soul. Um, how do we let go? Uh, I know that's one of the things you do. How do you help people let go of some of these limitations that they have stored up within their psyche? So the first thing is to bring an acknowledgement to it, right? So to start to have change, I must first acknowledge the way I'm feeling. Now, the next thing is to bring an awareness to where that messaging is coming from. So that's where the pyramid of financial influences starts to allow you to build that awareness. Now we can change the action, right? Because once I have an acknowledgement and an awareness of the way I'm feeling and where it's coming from, I can start to change the action. I can start to see where, where that is manifesting in my life. And now I can start to change that, right? So if I say, I'm always, I'm a spender, I am bad with money. If these are statements that I say, right, well, how do I feel about myself, right? I don't feel great about myself or on the financial conversation at all, right? So I'm going to acknowledge that feeling. Now I'm going to bring awareness to where that came from. Let's just say that I had an uncle who always said that to me. Right. I, I've talked to a lot of people that have had those experiences. Right. Now I'm dealing with the human experience of it. Right. That's right in my pyramid of financial influences. So I'm dealing with that lived experience. I can go right back to that conversation and the way that it felt for me. Right. But that lived experience, before I brought an awareness to it, I just accepted it. So that's going back to what you were sharing, Ken, about these these ideas and thoughts that we've internalized, right? And and a lot of ways accepted at par value. But now that I've worked through it, I can change the action, right? I can now bring in a different thought, right? That internal dialogue, I can say, I own my financial prosperity. That is a very different feeling and repeated creates a different belief and gives me the courage to create a different result. Don't our books go well together, Ken? They go so well together. I'm really loving this. this I, I do have to take another really quick break and uh, we'll come right back and we'll... Uh... We'll have some final thoughts around financial empowerment, what it, we just need to find it, what it means to you to really feel financially empowered ongoing. Back, everybody, we talked about the courage to redefine your financial journey. One of the ways we're going to do that, Martha's going to help us to redefine what financial empowerment he does. And Martha, you got about two minutes and go. <laughs> financial empowerment is about what you want for yourself. Now, does that sound simple? But it's often not easy. Because the financial conversation starts with everything we don't want. I don't want to be in debt. I don't want to have, you know, to end up with no money at the end of the month. We're focused there on suppression. Financial empowerment from the inside out 
focuses on expression, what you want to see for yourself. Financial empowerment focuses on the fact that what was does not have to define what is or what will be. Financial empowerment means taking your power back. Taking your power back is the power of your choice. Now, the key thing there is what are you choosing from? That's where we can now look at the riches of your story to then create the richness of your path forward. That's all focused on your own individual human experience. That's financial empowerment from the inside out. It does belong to you. I love it. All right, everybody, the uh, book is Cleopatra's Riches, and the author is Martha Adams, and Martha has done an incredible job today. Thank you so much for being here, Martha, and, and inspiring us and empowering all of us to take our financial challenges and crush them and open up to uh, financial abundance. Thank you so much, Martha. Thank you so much, Ken. What an absolute honor to be welcomed here with you today. And all of you, I'd like to thank you for tuning in today. I hope that you'll continue to watch the show. Let your friends and family know about it. That's how we grow. And if you are tuning in on a regular basis, you know that you are starting to see the unseeable and know the unknowable and do the impossible. Till next time.